Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us the sins that we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening, for gathering us together to learn your word. We thank you for uh, blessing us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for opening our hearts and minds to your word. We thank you for Father Johnson and all the blessings that you are showering through him and all the other people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good. Father, okay. Yes. We, we can see only half of your face. I think if you can put up with my half face, that's better. I want to have the um, Our Lady and then, you know, I think it's too much to see my whole face, actually. Yeah, I don't want you to miss seeing Our Lady, St. Jerome, Emiliani, Sacred Heart of Jesus, and uh, well, they are uh, all there, Father, but uh, you are also equally, equally important. Okay. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta I'll, put, I'll put myself like this so that I will not hide St. Joseph's face, only his feet. Okay. I adopted him as my foster father, so okay. <laughs> St. Joseph. Usually, it happens the other way around, no? They adopt children as they are, uh, adopt children. But I told St. Joseph, I will adopt you as my foster father. Because if Jesus did, if God did, That was a wise thing to do, so I will do the same. Yeah. Yeah, we need a special protection we need these prayers. And I see the effect of it very much. Okay. You know, my spiritual life and so on. Okay. And you know, my talks are supposed to be very sweet. Do you know why? Uh, I don't know. My laptop, the laptop that I'm using here of this parish, is kept on a cake box and there is a cake inside. And this cake, they gave, it was given to them during Christmas time, Panettone. Okay, what, and, what is that? Uh, panettone. It's a particular cake. Uh -huh. um, it's, a, it's an Italian cake, you know, okay. panettone. And uh, I, um, I'm just using it as a stand for my laptop, so that stand for the laptop of this parish, you know. So since the laptop is kept on this cake, exactly. it's very sweet. The sweetness of the cake should be permeating through the laptop, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is very good, Father. Good. So we we'll do that. Your voice is very sweet, Father. Oh, thank you. Very kind of you. Who is this actually? I'm Venus Joseph. I met you in Venus Harris Chapel. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Even though I am terror, at least my voice is not terror. That's good. Okay. Good. Uh, coming to uh, St. Peter's, so we'll continue. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, now we'll read verse. Uh, yesterday I started with verse. Uh, uh, now, since we are extending, I thought there's a lot to learn from these few verses that I'm going to do today, uh, especially first chapter about scripture, about uh, ministry, about uh, our uh, preaching and everything. So we'll continue with that one. So we were reading yesterday, verse 12, you know, and I started with verse 12 and spoke about the ministry of, uh, and most of these are my reflections, you know, that's why I, um, they're not exegesis, but my reflections. So I may go into more uh, into catechesis with this, but I think they will help us in our ministry in our, you know. Okay, so verse 12, reminder, I told you about yesterday, memory. I asked you to read, you know, Um, I think I did that. Let's see in my notes if I did it to you. I just, yesterday, I wrote Exodus, down some notes Exodus also. Exodus 13, 3. Joshua 4. Yes, yes, yes. Joshua 3. And jo actually, Joshua 3 was the background to understand Joshua 4, um, what we call... One to seven. One to seven. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, the, the, because this uh, virtue of, I told you about this uh, memory, not refresh the memory, refreshing memory. You know, that's what I spoke about. Yeah. See, what exactly is that refreshing memory? Because the reminder, you know, God will tell, even the, uh, Moses will remind them often that you were re released from is uh, Egyptians. Remember that. And the Passover was actually instituted to remind the people time to time. And we know our Eucharist is a memorial of his passion, death, and resurrection. 
So the reminder of what God has done to us for our soul and what God will do to us, what God expects of us is the memory. I'm continuing with this reminding ministry, ministry of reminding, ministry of refreshing, not only what God has done to us and what God is doing to us and what God is expecting of us, what God has promised. You know, we spoke about the promises and two adverbs, uh, sorry, adjectives that uh, Peter used to know, uh, precious and great promises. You remember that? And this, our ministry of reminding should also remind us, remind ourselves, and uh, it should help us to remind, remind others the great promises God has promised to us. Many beautiful promises. There are, for instance, sometimes when I feel a little bit of, you know, uh, for example, when I read that ordinance, you know, I told you, um, then today it was government also, uh, governor also passed it. When you hear that, you have to remind uh, yourself of promises. For example, as soon as you hear it, you think again, you know, I know yesterday I heard, day for yesterday I heard it. This after, this morning I read the news that governor also has. Yesterday uh, he passed, he passed, yesterday he signed. Passed, signed. So it's passed. When I read that, and again, I'm a little bit, oh, why Lord? Then we are reminded, Jesus said that, Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33, you would say, you will have persecutions in the world. But remember, I have conquered the world. And he said that. So then we have to remember ourselves of what also he told us, not only what he did to us, what he told us. And I told you the Holy Spirit is the one who reminds us, as I told you. So it's very important. Uh, and if you don't remember, and also Jesus told, I will be with you until the end. And then uh, 14, 18 of John, I will not leave you orphan. And Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, 29, you know, there are two sparrows sold for one penny. Not even one will fall down without the father knowing it. Every stand of your hair is counted. You are more precious than, you know, uh, sparrows. And so do not uh, be uh, fearful of only those who can kill your body, but also who can kill your soul. You know, these things are not, we have to remind ourselves these words so that we can face it. Otherwise, what happens? We'll be worried, we'll be panicking, we'll be bl blaming, we'll be criticizing, we'll be gossiping. We'll never end up doing what God wants us to do. So reminding is very important. And St. Peter says, he's reminding it. And imagine, he's going to die, he knows it. So his reminder is coming as a testament, I told you. Mm. You know, just giving a value to it. I'm going to die. And so he's not worried about, I'm going to die, what will happen to me, you know, and so on and so on. So it's, uh, he's ready to die at the uh, thing of so he's reminding. Second, he's reminding repeatedly. You know, it's a very good consolation for preachers. Sometimes when some sisters come to me for retreat, I start with this passage. You know, uh, said, uh, says verse, uh, you know, uh, 12 says, no, remind you of the things you have known and you are established in that. I tell them, sisters, whatever I'm going to say, you already know them. You probably are even practicing it. Then you might be wondering, why is his father giving, uh, telling the same thing? I tell them, son, Peter is doing the same. You know, sometimes we have to, the question to me is this, are we able to, sometimes we listen to talks or we listen to some, go for retreats. Personally, I went to one place for retreat two years in a row. The talks were similar. It's a priest retreat in Attapati Sehyon. The topics and so on, uh, is seventy percent were same, you know, and the, because when same persons come, then same the topics and so on. But I, I may go again there, but probably topics are same. Doesn't matter. We have to allow ourselves to be reminded of the things we already know. That's another thing for us. And next one, and he said, and he also makes sure that there will be something to remind. Do we have something to remind us of things? You know, uh, behind Joe's head, of course, not on top of his head, that I don't see anything, but behind, you see on, on the wall, faith, hope, and love. This is memorial. Yeah. We need to have things like that. So my question, God told them, no? God did not tell them, have a, first of all, circumcision was a reminder. So when these people reached, Joshua would have all of them circumcised when he reaches uh, you know, land of Canaan when they crossed the river Jordan. Why? Because all those people who were circumcised, they all had died in desert. 
they didn't enter into the promised land only the their descendants who were born during their 40 years of journey or 38 years of journey only they entered and those who were born they were not circumcised because you know they were traveling and then they we were not so once they enter the thing he will circumcise them circumcise all of them it's a reminder that you are set free that you belong to god so reminders on the body reminders are outside external that is to memorial stone all of you might have read it no one um, uh, joshua 4 1 to 7 god will tell them take the stones where the priest stepped there you know the story those who read well, chapter 3 will know it when they could not cross river jordan joshua god told joshua tell the priest to stand in the middle of the river with the ark of the covenant as soon as their feet touched the river and the river stopped flowing and they could cross it so there was a miracle so god will tell joshua bring 12 stones from that place where the priest stood and 12 stones for each tribe and then build a memorial let let those stones be a reminder so we need our reminders so now pictures are reminders you know images are reminders what joseph has written behind him they are reminders some you know it's always good to have reminders something what we hang around our neck you know some covenants you know what, what would jesus do wwjd we write you know we used to give to children here as a confirmation gift a wristband in which it will be written wwjd that means what would jesus do yeah, so we tell them, yeah, we will tell them, at least see it. And suppose we tell them like this. The thing is that whenever you have to make a decision, just see that and then say, what would Jesus do in this situation? Like I got only, you know, uh, uh, well, Jesus would do this one. Let's do it, you know. It's a reminder. Now, all may not see it, but then suddenly when something, oh, oh, what would Jesus do? Oh, now I want to do this. What would Jesus do? So we, this is reminders. We have to have include them in our ministry this kind of things no okay now coming to the next one uh death i just want to say speak something about death also i hope you don't mind because uh speed uh, peter speaks about uh, his uh, i uh, he's telling about he's, he's going to die just before his death he's writing this letter that's what he says you know it says like this i think it's duty my to refresh verse 13 as long as live in this body knowing that my tent soon be folded up as jesus has shown me that means jesus has told peter that you will die soon so his death has been predicted already and he said now here two beautiful things are there one the use of the word tent that means this body is temporary our earthly life is temporary ephemeral no it's not lasting you have to become aware of it because we are waiting for a body which will be raised so sometimes overly cautious, um, anxious about our body. Yeah. And uh, when we <clears throat> help people with uh, relationship, sometimes relationship also is because of the inferiority complex. Inferiority complex affects relationships of many people because they become uh, very sensitive. They can't take easily any criticisms, any comments, rejections. And so the relationship, they walk on eggshells. And so relationship is not very safe, yeah. very healthy. And one of the reasons is lack of healthy self-esteem. And one of the reasons for lack of healthy self-esteem is the body appearance. Mm. People have so much of, you know, what a lot of money they spend on growing hair, dying hair. And I, I'm not against any of this. I'm just telling you. And then, you know, with makeups and so on. Because appearance, you know, our body is temporary. If God gave a particular person a particular structure, that is the body that God wants him to have. We don't speak about privations. Privations are something which is, uh, you know, for example, if someone is blind, that is a privation. We are not speaking about that. But other things like a color and then structure and then... So, e what is your view on, uh, on uh, you know, exercise and, uh, you know, building the body and all for that? Good. No, that is uh, keeping our body healthy for the Lord. That is different from... The inferiority complex that comes from complexion. For example, let's say I'm born dark. Oh, all the time worried about I'm dark, I'm dark. You know, you apply all that is that you find, including the whitewashing and the whitener. And someone said there was a well, there is a whitening paste. Instead of uh, applying it on his tooth, he was applying all over his face also. And then you know, so it's 
what what i'm telling about no we have to take care of our body body is a temple of the holy spirit mm. it is through our body that god acts but i mean to say people overly conscious of their body their appearance not with regard to health not with regard to uh, serving others but as an image for them rejecting the body that god has given now i am born with this complexion dark complexion this is what god gave me mm. my history historicity is not chosen it's given mm. for example the where i was born which a century i was born in which city or town or village i was born to which parents i was born all these things are what we call the historicity is given to me by god mm. and they are chosen and given because god loves us and creates us so they are all part of his love mm. and i with this historicity only i can serve god mm. not wanting to be someone different than myself that's why catherine of siena used to say if you are if you have to be what god wants you to be you will change the world you don't have to be different and catherine of siena was not a, born in a royal family was not born in an educated family you get me no sometimes we have thing if i were to be born in a royal family if i were to be born in an educated family if i were to be born in this century if i were to be born in this country no we don't have to our history city is chosen by god for us which includes also our temporal life you know mm-hmm. so too much emphasis on this is sign that we are not accepting the providence of god mm-hmm. we are not able to see that god will do something through all of this things you know okay i see this also as a part of healing because quite a if people have a problems i dealing with youngsters i see that you know what a lot of problems they have and relationship and so on when we go to the root cause of relationship sometimes problems in relationship is inferiority complex and one of the reasons is their historicity is for the cause of the inferiority complex their appearance and their historicity no okay now about death today but Not... today if you really look at uh, the whole world uh, you know the message is to is against exactly what opposite to what you have you have to have shared right exactly yes when wanted to be some someone else exactly you know here in the i just went to the clinic here i have knee pain so i went there and then there's ad the uh, what you call the botox no you can keep your skin from wrinkle it wrinkle free you can all this they do all those uh, uplifting the face of lipment and to look ever young aging is also part of god's plan you know we have to go along with god's plan and that is how we will be glorifying god that is how god will be accomplishing the plan see remember when god created me he had a plan mm. we know that we all remember that jeremiah 21 2911 and to suit that plan only he creates me in a particular situation particular family particular way particular all those things so by changing myself totally i may be doing away with that plan of god mm. and may be causing hindrance to the plan of god by not being free you know mm. so therefore we have to be this is what we, we one of the virtues is modesty we know what is modesty no yeah yeah this is part of modesty i think so he is calling it steady ephemeral it's not a permanent is you know and that. but we should love and take care as jesus himself took care of it only in a limited way you know as it is like that you know i have a body and i offer it for god and so on and we believe in the resurrection of our bodies and new bodies will be given the body where there will be no aging no uh, there will be no complex and there will be no complaints there will be no gray hair and uh, there will be no bald head nothing like that that will be given in the resurrection so those uh, because... all have hope okay you can have a hope okay yeah i have a hope but yeah <laughs> <laughs> no what i'm asking is that is there any uh, limit in the sense uh, like different people die at different age you know father what yes. is just teaching on when the resurrected body what will be the age uh, i do not know uh, there is no teaching about it but uh, in the bible okay yeah but we do not know how where how it will be even i i even wonder see then let's put it this way we know i uh, this is my philosophical assumption ha uh. Uh, in heaven there is no time yeah past present and future mm. so even the appearance of the body will not have the age oh. it will be 
um, uh, pleasant to your eyes. That's why. Which age is more pleasant to you? We do not know. That will be. Uh-huh. You get me, no? So there will be no dissatisfaction whatsoever. Uh-huh. So if uh, I looking at you, but I like you very much, but someone looks at you and say, oh, I wish those had a little more hair then that is maybe for him you'll appear with a hair probably i'm just i'm, I'm telling you. it means there will be no aging because there's no time there's no past present future so you'll not be able to see only when there is time there is age young old and so on so there is no time so there will be no age there mm. so so it's all will be present yeah so if uh, if uh, you know for example uh, abraham father abraham is like a father Yes. And, uh, it really doesn't matter that he is uh, aged, uh, is what you're saying. It doesn't matter at all. It will not have matter anything. Otherwise, it will be kind of, you know, funny. That's why I don't like the picture, image of Trinity, where God the Father is, uh, you know, w- with a gray hair, with gray beard and bald head and so on. It's an image that, of course, we say God the Father has no body at all. Yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, there was a private revelation, uh, which is, uh, which has been said twice, I think two revelations. One is to mm. Mother Eugenia and uh, Father Michelle. Rodriguez, okay. this is where uh, Father God uh, had said this specifically, that uh, people have got a very old image about me. Yeah, yes. I'm not. Okay, that is not what I am. <laughs> so, yes. so that, that one particular you know point uh, I remember uh, reading uh, from the message. Yeah, because we have got an idea that Father means an old figure is Father. Yeah. Gray hair is father because that's in our conscience, uh, consciousness, not conscience, consciousness. You know, when we say wise man, immediately we think of a man with a gray beard, is yeah. a wise man, yeah. And then, so it is a, and then even Saint Joseph sometimes is predicted as a you no know, portrayed as a old man for two reasons. One, you know, one reason is that because he's a old man, so he'll be protecting Mother Mary, he'll be chased, and so on. No, it's like a father figure who protects Mother Mary, mm. you know. But, but I was telling to the other day, after studying psychology, after my past experience, sometimes old men suffer more from temptations than young ones. So we can never, but our common idea is that one, oh, old ones are free from temptations and so on. It's not true. Biologically, it's not true. So we have our own assumptions. So we put God the Father as an old one, one who is fatherly and so on. Okay. Anyway, so about death. Now, about death, we'll, uh, as you said, St. Peter's, uh, one thing beautiful, see, we have to remember as Christians, we should not be, um, no, I'm just trying to give counseling to some one person now on phone. The death has shaken him so much. Death of his loved one. It, it is true, we are human beings, we'll cry, Jesus himself wept and so on, but we have to move on. The reason why we don't move on, because we were not catechized on death. Mm. So, St. Peter here speaks about death is predicted by God. That means God decides when you are to die. Mm. So, death doesn't happen because of Corona. Corona is only a condition for you to die, not a cause. Mm. Not a cause. So, if someone dies, young priest dies of Corona, so no, corona. no, it was God had decided that he had to die at that time. And he died and Corona was one of the condition by, by which he died is not the cause. Death is determined only by God. Now only question mark here will come about abortion. Does God determine that child has to be died and so on? See in the mystery of God we do not understand it but we know life and death belongs to God and only God can have authority. So even when human free will tries to manipulate with the life God forces and still he has placed his own authority. But at least for us not to go into philosophical discussions, let us be aware, all of us, we have to be prepared for death. When? We do not know. But we know it will come. So prepare, being prepared. For that, having a view. A few passages, maybe if there is time since we are having an extended time till Wednesday we are going. Can someone take uh, some passages like, one takes Sirach chapter 40, 41. Takes uh, chapter 41. Someone please read uh, um, St. Paul's idea, that's better. Philippians, first chapter. Um, 20 onwards, if you can read first chapter, 20 onwards. Let's take a few passages we'll read. Philippians, first chapter, verse 20 onwards, 20 to 26. And first Thessalonians, fourth chapter, 13 to 14. Say, say, I'm, I'm reading Philippians for 
20 onwards uh, philippians first it chapter 20 onwards 20 on yeah, first chapter 20 onwards 20 onwards it is my eager expectation and hope that i will not be put to shame in any way but that by my speaking with all boldness christ will be exalted now as always in my body whether by life or by death see this is important christ should be exalted in my body whether by life or by death that is the christian's view continue please he is a god between whether to live or to die continue please ready 26 for to me living is christ and dying is gain if i am to live in the flesh that means fruitful labor for me and i do not know which i prefer i am hard pressed between the two my desire is to depart and be with christ for so that is far better but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you since i am convinced of this i know that i will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that i may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when i come to you again see very beautiful no he is telling life is gain uh, death is gain life is so he wants to live or die all to glory glorify god and he says he wants to die so that he can be with god together but he wants to live so that he can preach the gospel so if god wants him to live longer to preach he is happy to or is he happy to die because he will say that in same philippians chapter 3 verse 20 don't read it you will say our citizenship is in heaven okay. oh, it's not here and this is one thing i tell people when things go wrong always tell yourself things will not be perfect here we are expecting perfection here perfect wife perfect husband perfect children perfect business perfect there will be no perfection here because we are not in heaven so we when you arrange a program suppose 90% go well 10% goes wrong don't panic over it and say oh this that and so on we will not have perfection in anything mm. then we say suppose loved ones i tell the couples oh my husband he is good in this but he has this problem that problem i tell him yes he has to have a problem because you will not find a perfect husband because you are not in heaven only in heaven perfection exists that awareness will help us to accept tolerate bear with others tolerate the things that do not go according to our intention and to live always at peace you know to keep our um, to be peace to live that peace peace that jesus promises no mm-hmm. not to be panicking worrying blaming criticizing uh, you know that's important now um same also it's satisfying you know ministry i tell people always if you are preaching you will not satisfy everyone 10 will be satisfied 10 will not be satisfied uh, even the 10 5 90% will be okay other never expect perfection in anything you do even in your ministry even in your uh, just accept and say okay that's fine this is there is no absolute you know the thing because we are not in heaven and st peter you remember no last time when i did the first peter our identity as especially um, mark it and read it when you get time uh, first peter chapter 2 aliens i may even made you read yesterday you know second uh, second chapter verse 11 onwards we are aliens yeah we are paradises literally we are aliens strangers you know okay read thessalonians 4 13 and 14 first thessalonians dude you are reading yes brother i'll do that first thessalonians uh, 4 13 14 okay yes yeah. but we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope <clears throat> for since we believe that jesus died and rose again even so through jesus god will bring with him those who have died okay and so do not grieve as if you have no hope is telling not to grieve we of course we grieve but too much of grieving 
you know, I'm going to, well, they asked me to go to your family to bless the child. It's only two year old child is going to die. And I will not go there and proclaim saying that child will be alive. Well, I'm not going to pray for that. No, if it's God wants the child to die, prepare the parents to accept the death of the child. It could be only child and so on. We do not know. So if I have to go with the idea only to tell all, pray, you should pray, the child should be, we do not know. Why? Because God has said, and I came to know also that they are prepared for that and the priests have prepared them. They are very happy with that. In the sense, happy that they are expecting, uh, you know, they, they, they know that God has intervened. They got the clear idea that God has intervened in their life. That is important for us. God intervenes in our life. Now, the young age that I was reflecting, that's why this chapter 41 can someone read this? Sirach chapter 41, 1 to 4. Whether young or old, whether you die, it is the will of God. You know, we spoke about it once in the past when I did something about on uh, All Saints Day, but Sirach 41. Oh, oh death. death. Sorry. How bitter is the thought of you to the one at peace among possessions? who has nothing to worry about and is prosperous in everything and still is vigorous enough to enjoy food. O oh death, how welcome is your sentence to one who is needy and failing in strength, worn down by age and anxious about everything, to one who is contrary and has lost all patience. Do not fear death's decree for you. Remember those who went before you and those who will come after. This is the Lord's decree for all flesh. Why then should you reject the will of the Most High? Whether life lasts for ten years or a hundred or a thousand, there are no questions asked you see, very beautiful, no? It's the will of the Most High that we should die. And whether life is 10 years or 100 years, doesn't matter. Two-year-old child or 100-year-old man, doesn't matter. That's what the reading says very clearly. You know, and this was before the death of Jesus. It's a more, but we know that Jesus died and rose again. So death has a meaning. And Jesus died only at the age of 33, you know? Okay. Now, and St. Peter speaks about death as in this thing. Okay, I think so. Is a, we'll move on to next verse. Now, next verse, all once again for ministry, it's very important. Can someone read next verse, please? 16, verse 16. And then, of course, with the death, you can read also uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Is a lot of things. Where is death? Where is your sting? And so on and so on. Anyway, we'll not go into that one. 16, verse 16. Can you read, please? We have finished now up to 15. Um, 16. Can I read or someone is reading? For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of this majesty. My eyewitnesses of his majesty. Okay, just we'll stop there. The ministry, yeah, we'll stop there. The two words I want you to underline is there to take to heart is that what were they preaching? What were they teaching? The power of God and the return of Christ Jesus. This is important in our preaching. Not God's power only to have a happy life here on earth. God's power only God heals, God raises, but God's power we have to preach but not to help people experience healing and then to praise God, give witness and go ahead. But God's power is to be preached to make them wait for his second coming. That is important. That is why the prosperity gospels, we have to preach about healing. We have to preach about God's intervention, deliverance. But with a view that the healed person will learn to wait for the second coming of Christ. But the prosperity gospel preaches only the power of Christ without 
his return of Christ, the parousia. Then what happens is all about you will get healed, you will do this, you'll get, and then and the people get healed and give testimony, and then they are happy with that and they go ahead. And we think we are achieved. And the retreat is successful. As many number of people have been healed, the retreat is successful. No, that retreat is a failure. How many people have, through that experience of the power of Christ, have desired to live for their life for God, knowing that God is going to come back soon, prepare themselves, because all our preaching is to prepare people for the second coming. Our whole life, as Catechism of the Catholic Church says, is characterized by our waiting for his second coming. Okay, is that clear? So this is very important for us. Okay, now in this, uh, he speaks about the myths, why he is using this myth and stories and so on, because he is refuting. Now, is there anything, is, everything is okay, no? Bible verse number? Yeah. Someone is asking? Yeah. Which, which Bible verse, Teresa? 16, 16. Yeah. Okay, let's speak about 16, verse 16. That's uh, first, um, I think, 16, verse 16. Which because chapter is? Which chapter? First chapter. First Peter, first chapter, verse 16. Oh, first You're going verse okay. by verse. Because this time I'm literally doing as a Bible second study. Peter. Verse by verse I'm going. But second chapter will go a little faster because the first one has got quite a lot of things, you know. Okay. Okay, okay yeah. Father. So verse 16. So for our ministry, always preach about power of Christ with the view of preparing them for the second coming. And he is telling, and the, and the preaching, and he is making it very clear. Why he is speaking about the theories and the myths and so on? Because there were some false teachers who were coming. So we should be able to distinguish between who preached based on the myth, who preached based on the eyewitness. This is very important. At that time, there were a lot of, there was gospel of Peter. There was also gospel of James and so many uh, apocryphal books were there. Mm. But this, and these books, Father, these books uh, are uh, banned from reading, Father, or is it, uh, uh, you know, what is... Not uh, banned from reading. Uh, these books have been considered as un inauthentic. No, not authentic. Okay. So, which means, I mean, does it not mean that it is uh, bad uh, from reading as such? Uh, uh, let's put it this way. If you read and take it as a message, it's bad. Because you will base your faith on that. Yeah, because this in Enoch uh, has got one, one and two, right? Enoch one and two. Yes, but uh, even uh, Jude will refer to that one. Saint Jude will refer to the Enoch one and two, and then um, um, ascent of Mount. There are quite a lot of them are there. Yeah. So, uh, but, so but, mm, yes, yes. Tell me, tell me. So it is not uh, wrong in reading that. Uh, I will say it's not wrong in reading, but if you are going to base yourself on it. Hmm then you are not uh, are literally listening to the spirit's voice. Mm. The evil spirit also can work through you because they are not canonical. They are not given to you as a scripture, as a word of God by the church. Okay, okay. See, what has been given to you as a word of God by the church, you are pretty sure that we, we, the spirit will work through that. It's a prophecy inspired by the spirit. But other books, the church, when it said it is not canonical, it said then he's not able to find really the work of the spirit there, voice of the spirit there. Oh, okay. Mm. You know, for example, there's infancy gospel where Jesus was uh, uh, growing with the same garment, you know, he maybe had never to stitch or clean. He just one put on and as Jesus was growing, it was growing along with it. These are all, this takes away the human humanity of Jesus. Mm. It You base yourself on that, then you lose to uh, you you, you lead it leads you to a heresy where Jesus was only divine, not human. Mm. Gnostics also believe like that. You know, so we 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 will be going in a wrong direction. Mm. And then he used to make uh, birds and then for uh, toys like a plane, and then he will uh, 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 blow on them and they will get life and they will fly and they will uh, all these all these things, you know. So and even the Peter's gospel, um I was reading the other day, some parts of it in the uh, in biblical commentary, you have it and so on, that Jesus was, uh, uh, for example, Gnostics, there is one gospel is there, they take the idea of Gnostics and so on, where they speak about Jesus was, the St. John, in his first letter, would speak about Jesus born of blood and water. And he will say, not only water, but also blood. 
Now we would think, why is he saying that? We kind of puzzling, no? The background was that there was at that time, there was Gnostics of St. Thera, one particular place. And what they were believing, um, uh, Gnostics of what, I don't remember. But what they were believing, that Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph in a normal way. They were married and he was born. And in that child, divine person came and dwelt. And if only from the moment of baptism, that is by water, baptism of John the Baptist, it was divine person. And it was not in his blood. So when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, it, that blood had no value because it was not the blood of God. It was only blood of Jesus of Nazareth who was born to Joseph and Mary through natural way. You get it, no? So, this actually confuses the mind, actually. It confuses, not only confuses, it's erroneous. Yeah. And uh, now we have um, images about some, uh, there are some messages that go around this priest died and went to heaven and he saw this, saw that, and so on. And Maria Sima's book, where she speaks about uh, the hands of some people were darkened in the purgatory. And the reason, when he asked, because they received communion on hand. Mm. Can you believe this? Mm. And whereas some other, Marisima also speaks about some things which are very uh, um, akin to our Catholic teaching. And she is a Catholic nun. And this uh, book has been promoted by those who belong to the Benjigore and so on, no? the visionaries and things like that. See how it's confusing you. Mm. And there are some truth in that. That's why I told you the other day. The error which is closer to truth is more dangerous than error which is which can be identified as error. You know? So, they, therefore, we have to be very careful in rejecting them. And we know that spirit does, will not work. I firmly believe to the church, Jesus gave the key to bind and let loose. If church has said these are canonical and they are canonical and through them only God will speak. Mm. And I will not go to anything other than that. Okay. Mm. It may look like helping me to understand, but there will be, it will be help you to understand maybe 90% and the rest 10% will be the one which will, be put, uh, which will put me into trouble. Mm. You know? Okay. Okay. Coming to, uh, I think it's time. We should stop, isn't it? Yeah, six o'clock. Ah, six o'clock. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Then I will continue with this one. And then, um, so he speaks about, so we about experience, I being eyewitness of Christ. Okay, St. Peter. Now, when he says eyewitness of his majesty, he is referring to the um, transfiguration event. Now, there is a very beautiful point. Continue reading, I'll tell you. Continue reading 6, 17 and 18. I'll tell you what it is. 17 and 18. For, for he received honor and glory from God, the Father, when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Yeah. So for our ministry, ministry of preaching or teaching or sharing the gospel, witnessing, the, it will have power when we have, we can boldly say, I have experienced it. Mm. That is why prayerful person's preaching will be more powerful than a person who reads and produ reproduces. Say it again, because prayerful person. The witness, uh, preaching of a prayerful person will have more effect than an intellectual intellectual person who does research and preaches. Mm. Because one who does research and preaches, he preaches from what he has learned, mm. what he has read. But the person who is prayerful, he will preach from his experience, mm. his personal testimony, experience of God. Yeah, And that's why intimacy with Christ is very, very, very important for our ministry. Amen. We cannot pretend to do a ministry just only relying on what you have learned, what you have studied, what you have heard, and so on. It's not reproduction of what I read and so on. We have to personally sit with the Lord. And when you preach, you should be able to tell, I have tasted the Lord. Mm. Not that I read this and Paul said this. Oh, it's true. But I have tasted the Lord. That's very important. So prayer is 
at the heart of all preaching. And that's why I have told you all this already this. Jesus would spend time in prayer. And in between the preaching, he will leave the preaching and he will go on. You know, people will be waiting for him. Mm. I refer to you. I even asked you the question and some of you said, no, no, we cannot leave and go. I said, refer to Matthew, the Gospel of Luke chapter 5, verse um, 16. You know, 15, 16, if you read, people will be waiting for him. Mm. And he will leave them and go to a deserted place to pray. Mm. You remember, I was speaking about him when I was speaking about the prayer. Because uh, that prayer was intimacy with the Lord. That is important for us to be witnesses. Okay? That then, our way, every word will have this power of uh, the spirit because we are speaking from our eyewitnesses, no? I mean, personal witness. He speaks about it. Okay. Uh, we, ourselves, we ourselves heard his voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So to be with him on the holy mountain, it's important before you preach. To be with him on holy mountain means to become one who can be chosen by the Lord to be with him, to get, entry, get the special revelation from God. You know, that's very important. Okay, verse 19. So, we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. We will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Okay, now comes the importance of scripture. Hmm. Okay, now you see, Peter says, we believe firmly in the messages of the prophets. Why? The messages of the prophets were confirmed by God himself. God the Father simply confirmed the messages of the prophets. That is why the word of God for us is very, very, very important. Because in the word of God, there is prophecy of uh, about Jesus and there's everything. That's why St. Paul who tell, I connect it also with uh, quenching the Holy Spirit. If you let's say, let's read that, then listen, take chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, read verse 19, and then read after the verse 20. First Thessalonians, 19, First Thessalonians. chapter 5, verse 19, first read 19, then after us read 20. Can somebody read, please go ahead, or is... Yeah, anybody who gets it. First yeah, yeah, chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Simply, okay, I'll tell what is that one, no? The, um, do not, do not quench the spirit. Yeah. Father, do not. Mm, yes, read, please. Read the rest. Uh, read. Do, not, do not quench the spirit. Mm. Do not despise the words of prophets. Yes. But test mm. everything, hold fast to what is good. Yeah. You see, I even abstain we say, from yeah. every form yeah. of evil. Yeah, that's fine. That's enough. That's enough. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. I feel we will quench the Holy Spirit if we don't take seriously the prophecies and the um, uh, scripture. Mm. But of course, we have to test them. That means we have to. That is John will speak about that. We know 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 6 and so on, testing the spirit and so on. But the more we read the scripture, more we will be allowing the Holy Spirit to act in us. Mm. Because when you despise the prophecies, we'll be also, you know, instead we'll be take seriously that. This is my interpretation of connecting one and two because when St. Paul speaks in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, you know, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And the 31, he will tell, what are the things that grieve the Holy Spirit? Anger, slander, resentment, and so on. So here, when he speaks about do not quench, and he speaks about also, it looks like independent, but you know, scripture, reading the scripture is very important. Reading the scripture prayerfully. Mm. Not that uh, the John Paul II will use that, St. John Paul II will use that word in Vita Consecrata. Prayerful familiarity with the gospel. Mm. Prayerful familiarity with the word of God. So, what is his prayerful familiarity with the word of God? Reading the word of God as the word of God. Mm. Okay? That is how it is. Okay. 
Uh, now, um, uh, also, I just want to recall to you um, that God confirms the scripture. You know, here Sir Peter says, whatever we heard about the prophecies, we know God himself confirmed it. The parable of uh, that uh, rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. You know, we are not going to read that now. It will take time. But uh, you know, what does uh, rich man ask for? You know, send me to my father's house so that I can warn my brothers that there is hell. You remember that? Right, right. Yeah. And what is, what is the answer of Abraham? I mean, the Jesus, Jesus yeah. through that parable. What does Jesus say? They will not believe. Uh, they have prophets. They have prophets and Moses. They have, prophets. They have scripture. Yeah. Let them learn from scripture. You dead person have to don't know. You don't have need supernatural always. Let them learn from scripture. And then he will say, but you know, if they will not uh, you take it in from the scripture, because after all, it's a book. Instead, you'll say, if uh, people, the dead person goes, they will believe. And Jesus says, no. If they don't believe Moses and script, uh, prophets, if they don't accept the scripture, even if dead person goes and says, they will not have the grace to accept it. They will see and see, but they will not listen. As the Isaiah prophesied, no? They will see and see, but they will not be able to understand. They will hear and hear, but they will not perceive. So, if we don't learn how to read scripture and understand the word of God and understand God's message for us, we cannot get supernatural, all counseling and this and so on. We run behind, we will not get the proper understanding. You know? Reading scripture prayerfully is very important. Okay, next verse, we will continue with that one. Uh, now, the, so he speaks about these prophecies are not yet fulfilled, but they are like a light, it's like a journey. We are walking through a dark tunnel, let's imagine. But you know, at the end of the tunnel, there is a bright sun shine. And to reach that one, you need a, some light leading you to that. So these messages of prophets are like a light until the bright light will shine on you. So you have to hold on to that. If you lose them, then we'll not be able to go towards that light. So it's very important. That's what he says, no? This, so, is, this is in con connection with the, uh, the death also, Father. Uh, because, uh, you know, many of these, uh, you know, near-death experiences, uh, one of the common things which we hear from them is that they pass through a tunnel, dark tunnel, and they, end, they come to a light, a state where there, there is light. And they... And that, well, uh, yes, as and, you said, there is something um, beyond my understanding. In the sense... I can't find a scriptural basis for that. Neither the church teaches in those terms. But we, the church does teach the terms of light, eternal light from the book of Revelation and so on. But what is that light? We do not know. Jesus also speaks of that, you know, um, you will not walk in darkness, but in the light. So it's a salvation. So we do not know really because there are experiences. I don't know how to speak about it in an objective way. Okay. okay. I really do not know, yeah. you know. But of course, the uh, book of Revelation says there will be no need of lamps because God himself will be the light and God is shown as the light. Mm. God appears as the light. All these things are perfectly okay. Mm. Other than that, I cannot say anything. No? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next. Um, and also, I would put a little bit of caution with regard to uh, believing in people who have died, gone to purgatory and come back, be very careful. They may look like uh, helping you a lot, mm. but um, they can also, now for example, many among the many heresies that are rejected, one of them is, for example, uh, devotion to Our Lady. It's uh, Our Lady of All Nations, community of Our Lady of All Nations, there is one. Um, it's all, everything is perfect, except that then it comes that that person who is the founder of that is the incarnation of Mary. Oh. You know, there will be some hook somewhere. And then there's another one, the covenant theory. With that red seal, you'll find the seal theory. It all looks so good, but then, and it starts denying God somewhere, putting something in question. That's why churches put it under question, no? So we have to be a little bit careful when we take all these experiences. Mm. or rather very careful. That's why church has never ever uh, encouraged people to read these things and take them. Even if it is a, you know, there are rumors, no, this priest died, he was there three days after that he came back, then he had this, all that says no, we can't, that's why we never use them for preaching and so on. 
while some you know spend their whole spiritual life based on that that is also because of lack of understanding of christ mm. it's because we are not met to christ so we look for all these supernatural things and so on run behind all those things and then because if you are known the person of christ and the gospel of christ we live all other things will become immaterial so just a, okay last verse uh i think we'll stop because at the last verse i want to uh, really explain to you better, much in a, in a better light with regard to the word of god about prophecies and then interpretation human interpretation the holy spirit and, and so on okay. so probably we'll stop with that i'll start tomorrow second chapter will be much easier third or so so as i said till wednesday we have time we can study in depth so we can learn a lot of things okay now most of this i looked from the angle of also ministry and proclamation witnessing uh, you know sharing the gospel with others you know few points i shared okay i'll give you the blessings yeah i mean not blessings i'll give you my priestly blessing the lord be with you and with your spirit through the intercession of blessed virgin mary saint joseph saint jerome and millennium all the angels and saints may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit thank you father thank you beautiful thank, thank, you. You, father. thank, thank you father thank you brother father. lovely teaching thank you father thank, thank, you, father. thank, thank you father thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.